Okay. Audio up. Can we hear me? Check it, check it, check, check, check. do it hey everybody my name is Michael Markowski and you're coming or I'm coming to you or you're through the tubes or what however this is working welcome to my studio uh, today we are going to be learning how to draw feet in shoes or shoes or uh, invisible feet or um, uh, I don't know any other way to put that. So, uh, the reason why I guess I'm making, I guess the, just the distinction between just shoes is I want to show you, I, I guess one of the things that I do with my, my more advanced students is what we would do is we would spend a whole class learning how to draw feet and at the and we would have a model in the classroom, often maybe two or three models, and their shoes and stuff are off, and students are, are drawing the, the feet of the models. And then kind of right with about the last hour, what I do is I get the models to put the shoes back on, and I get the students to try to draw the feet inside the shoes. And it's a great way to really see how well people have kind of picked up on the the lessons about how to draw feet because if you can kind of use your x-ray vision and see through the leather and the cotton or spandex polyester whatever shoes are made of these days then I think you've really got it now we're not going to do that in this class although I might show you how I do that um, because it's maybe a little bit too difficult for, for the, you know, this is a beginner's class and I want to make sure that anybody who's just tuning in for the very, very first time is able to do what we're, what we've done and what we're going to do. Um, but that is kind of ultimately where you want to be able to get to. You want to be able to um, look around you at all times and, and see inspiration and whether, and regardless of what people are wearing, you want to be able to, let's say, you see an old man sitting in a bus stop, you want to be able to draw Superman sitting at a bus stop. Or you see a little baby on the carpet, you could turn that into Wonder Woman, you know, sitting down, you know, at a, uh, on her royal throne. If I remember, it, her name is Princess Diana, right? Isn't that, Wonder Woman's a princess, right? Or queen or anyway uh, blah 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 so we are going to learn how to draw um, some shoes and I'm going to show you kind of how I would draw the feet inside them so let's go to a blank page in our sketchbook and we don't have the cantaloupe cam, uh, the, the special camera that was focused on the cantaloupe today, um, but we can use our imaginations to, um, to to try to capture that same sort of uh, experience. So let's draw. Oh, let me get the. So. Let's uh, divide this page into quarters. I saw a comment from Heidi last class saying she uh, has got so used to drawing these kind of quadrants on the page that, <laughs> which is it's really helpful. Like especially if you have a larger sketchbook, um, to kind of divide it up into smaller things so that you can um, both kind of focus on some smaller details and then it's also you know for sometimes for some of us we get really anxious about the big empty white you know all of this space where do we start there's something about even just breaking it up into four that's like okay so I don't got to fill the whole thing up now I just got to do these little things and now the page is already kind of marked up so uh, it's not such a big deal right so it kind of almost takes a little bit of the pressure off. So let's draw some more 
of these cantaloupes. Now we're gonna use our imagination to do it. Um, so let's, uh, well, let's start out with the side facing version here. So again, it doesn't matter for me, I don't care if it's a straight line or not. Let's take, put an arc on there like a rainbow. And then let's put another arc on there. And then we could just call this finished, but let's say we want to give it a little something different. So how about, let's say we're looking at it on an angle, just a slight angle like that. And for those of you who are like, what exactly are we drawing? If you remember from last week's episode, I took a cantaloupe, I cut it into quarters, and then we were drawing the cantaloupe from different angles, right? So just to kind of uh, finish this drawing off. So let's say I'm gonna just give it a little bit of curves inside here. This is the, the guts of the, or the center of the cantaloupe where we carved out the, the uh, uh, seeds and such. So, all right, so let's say the light is coming in from this side again, and then we might have a shadow, let's say like kind of a longer shadow. And I, um, I think a lot about shadows and how important they are for making a drawing, because they, they tell us so much about you know the, the where the lights coming from uh, and the intensity of light or the time of day all that kind of stuff but they also tell us a lot about the shape itself because even just as I've this here this tells me that this part is kind of is round and it's coming up and therefore there's kind of a gap between this surface and this surface right Whereas it touches this, so this means that this part is on the ground or the table or wherever you want to think about it. Okay. So there's one. What's another one that we could think of? Okay. Um, I'm going to rotate this in my mind. So how about... We draw, I'm gonna draw a vertical line this time. And this time, I'm not exactly sure where I'm going with this, but again, you just start with a line and you just start seeing where they're gonna go. All right, so here's one side of the cantaloupe. That probably means that this other one is going to be on an angle like that. You can see a little bit of the bottom down here. Okay, so I'm just going to darken this in. Last episode we had a little bit of some technical difficulties. It looked like YouTube was experiencing it was some glitches, and but uh, you know I did watch it afterwards, and it seemed like everything loaded up fine. So that the 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 episode itself is all there. So those of you that may have watched and were just got tired, or you're just like, ah, oh, this is crazy. I'm just gonna tune in later. Well, the whole thing is there if you did want to take another crack at it and, and watch it again. So, you know, what I'm doing here is I'm just drawing from my imagination. And I think this is ultimately where you want to be able to get to, is just, is that you don't need reference material. You just sort of like, oh, okay, I want to draw a cantaloupe. 
I'm gonna cut it, I'm gonna put it on the table. Like, let's say this is the table in behind. All right, see how I did that? I just sort of carried that background line behind. And let's say, this side's darker because the light's coming from one side. And I should mention again, those of you who might be tuning in for the first time, you don't have to use colored pencils if you don't want to. I'm just using um, red and blue. As so you can see, the first step is usually in red and then blue as I add a little more to it. Let me see. What would be... Um, let's draw one from the opposite side here. So... Let's say I'm going to put, so this, how, what have I done here? Okay, I wasn't intending to put that there, but how can I make that work? How can I make this work? Um, let's say this is, this. well, you know what? I, wasn't what I was intending to do, so I'm just going to almost ignore it, really. So let's say we had this curve. So this is <laughs> maybe more advanced than... than uh, I'm sort of drawing the other side that you can't see here. Just to kind of keep things entertaining for myself, I guess. Okay, so... Uh, where's... Get an eraser right here. Just obliterate that line. So it's, I'm intending to kind of show that, you know, we don't always see the center of the cantaloupe even when we cut it open, right? So, and obviously today when we're talking about feet and we're using this kind of cantaloupe trick, right? basically the whole time we don't see the cantaloupe, so I just thought it would be important to that would look like. And we're using these dotted lines to kind of show... So those dotted lines kind of show the interior of that shape. Right, so here would be where the seeds would go on the inside. And then I'm just going to put a little bit of shading on this outer side. So, you know, what I've just drawn here may be more complicated uh, for some of the beginner artists kind of watching, but I do think it's also helpful for people just to see... Uh, oh, Peter's saying the volume might be a little bit loud, so let's take it down. Let me know how that is, Peter. I might also be talking more quietly, maybe. 
<laughs> okay, so let's do one more of these before we move on to drawing some shoes. What would be another angle? Um, let's draw this again, but let's see let's see the side that we weren't able to see before. So actually let's let's make it a more dramatic. I don't, I don't want to make it too narrow. So let's do this. Shall make it a little bigger. So this kind of thing is I, I personally love these kind of little challenges because it, it keeps things interesting. It's things that I can draw over and over and over again. And it can also become like uh, things that you can doodle and you don't have to worry about it being perfect like you could just do these endlessly in your sketchbook you know, like how would this look like from this angle and of course you could just get a cantaloupe like i did last class and draw from that right Shade this in here. <laughs> Anyone who's just tuned in and is expecting to see people drawing shoes is like, what on earth is this guy showing them? Very soon enough, probably in about two minutes, we will get to it. And like last class, everything will be explained. All right, so again, those dotted lines show us the hidden side. I mean, you wouldn't necessarily probably want uh, to, to draw those dotted lines in a finished artwork. Um, but I just think for our purpose, seeing those dotted lines can help some people. Because sometimes people have a hard time visualizing this stuff. And um, I want to try as much as possible always to, to make sure people aren't confused. And I want to make this as kind of a... Le as least intimidating of a space as possible for people watching. Because, you know, I love taking classes. I love going to school. I spent like seven years in art school between undergrad and graduate school because I just love learning and I'm one of those persons in the classroom who's asking all of the so-called stupid questions. But at the end of the day, I may ask all of the, again, those so-called stupid questions. I usually know the material better than anybody because I've sort of managed to kind of think through all the different possibilities. Now I know all of the problems that may arise, etc. Horizon line and behind here. If you wanted to kind of get more accurate, here this is my Apple pencil case. All right, you could draw, use a ruler or anything to help you get that line straight onto the other side. All right, and the horizon line could be, you know, where it doesn't. There's no relationship necessarily with where I've drawn that because horizon line could be higher or lower or something object to be closer or further away from the table just sometimes I find it's kind of nice to put that in there um, Amy says yeah it's a bit loud Peter's thumbs up music is m is probably much better at this point and Heidi says was the cantaloupe delicious it was delicious actually after <laughs> immediately after that class uh, ended I just sat here for uh, like 20 minutes 
eating cantaloupe, which is I highly recommended after an art lesson. Whether you're the one teaching it or not. And I, I was, afterwards I was thinking, I should have just done this while I was giving feedback on the artwork. It's just sitting here chewing my cantaloupe. Anyway, okay. So we've got some of these preparatory drawings done. So, well, maybe I'll just leave that on the screen while I find the next... Uh, where did my... There it is. Looking for my computer mouse. Um, okay. So... I think... What we're going to do is we are going to um, do a few drawings, studies of some shoes, and then we're going to work our way up to a particularly, uh, well, let me see, I'll bring this up here. I'll show you my computer screen there. And, and obviously, again, if I'm going too fast for some people, and I, like I just did now, switch from one view to the other, by all means, Pause your computer and and finish drawing at your own pace. I try to go slow enough so that everybody feels there's enough time, but you know I'll just keep on going. And um, uh, but you could always also just stop and then continue. You know, just leave your drawing unfinished and then work on to the next thing and come back. And then you've got a drawing that's already a little bit started. I mean, I just don't want you to feel like oh no, what's going on? We're gonna keep things pretty relaxed. Okay, so one of them, I was trying to think again, what is a famous shoe uh, or a painting or drawing of shoes? And um, there's a number of them, but, you know, Van Gogh, Van Gogh uh, is, as, as I believe it's correctly pronounced, is very famous for having painted his shoes a few times at least three times that I'm aware of. And uh, I see Vans, the shoe brand has released a, 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 uh, a series of shoes with prints on them. And I did look, but it looks like they're all sold out. So not that I would necessarily want them, but I was like, oh, that's, it. I'm always interested to see how Monet and Van Gogh and Picasso and Matisse always get seem to get put on umbrellas and everything else that can possibly be sold. Anyway, so I think we're going to work our way up to uh, one of these Van Gogh drawings. I think this will be what we'll finish with today. Um, but before we get there, I want to try drawing some images of uh, people wearing shoes rather than just empty shoes. So let's do a quick uh, search here. And um, this is my favorite website. Again, I'm not paid for this, but this is where you can find free images that you can use for your business or for, as opposed to using Google or any or Yahoo or anything else. So let's see, shoes. Um, Okay, actually, let's use this one right off the top here. Uh, I'm just going to make sure I drag a copy of this for the show notes. Which, by the way, I'm, I'm sorry I haven't... Uh, I keep meaning to one day sit down and then make do all the notations for what happened in every episode in the description, but I just... Usually at the end of every episode, I'm thinking about the next episode. Okay, so how would we go about drawing this shoe? Well, let me, you know what, let's do two different ways, both of which we've covered in this uh, um, uh, class. <laughs> um, Okay, so I'm just going to divide the paper in half. Let's bring up... Oop. Where'd it go? There we go. Okay. So, I'm going to do... Uh, the version on the top, I'm going to use what we call the block-in method or the envelope method to do that, right? So that method is working from the outside in. 
So let's say I want to draw this. Uh, I'm just going to draw. Well, let's see how, how fast we can go. Well, I'm going to draw the shoe in the front. And let's say, so I'm going to start with like a box. I'm trying to create like a, like a kind of coffin or the, the, the line on the sidewalk after, um, you know, a body's been found, right? And they've, they are doing the outline. So I kind of start with this basic shape that I can work away from. So here's the ground, right? So, and this, there's no science behind this. Things don't have to be in the right place. I sometimes see people when they start the block in method really focus very intensely about trying to get this right. So we want to just kind of think about getting something on the page that we can react to. So once we've done, we've got some stuff, I already see plenty of problems with this, but let's kind of take a look. So let's go for the bottom of the sole of this shoe. Let's try to get that angle here. So does that look, that looks pretty good. I'm actually pretty happy with that line. That looks pretty good, All right? And then we come up here and then I'm gonna kind of chisel this in just a bit because it kind of starts down here and curves a bit, All right? And even here, I'm just gonna quickly, let's say draw, this would be the, the bottom part of the shoe. And I know it sweeps up and down, but just generally that's where it is, All right? And I'm even gonna, let's say this is this next part on the back of the shoe, All right? So then that would mean this would be where the shoe kind of goes up and around. Okay, and then even then, this is where the swoosh is. All right, mm, I feel like things are okay at this point, All right? And then this, oh sorry, this is where the lip, of, or the, so this is this guy's f foot somewhere up here in these, you know, pants. Um, this line actually goes up here and then kind of curves. Now, let's get this curve. Let's look at that line. How does that line match up with the photograph? Well, I think it's probably more like that, I think. All right, so I think it's a little bit more of a steep line there. Okay, so now I decide, okay, does this Nike swoosh might need to be a little bit longer. Okay. And then this can curve back and then I can look okay. That line looks pretty good. Pretty happy with that. Okay. So that means we've got these wrinkles here. And then I've got that. Well, I think it needs to be a little bit steeper. So then I'm making this line. All right. Okay. So this is the bottom and it curves. All right. And then this curves and comes up and kind of go Well, let's actually, so let's see. I've drawn this guy's pant leg like that. But if I compare it to the original, it looks more like that, right? And this kind of thing, you know, for me, it's I'm, I can look at the screen right in front of me and I can see both things side by side. This is probably a little bit more difficult for most people at home because you got a computer and you're kind of going to look up and down at the computer or you have an iPad or your phone you're working from. 
you know, if you're working from a magazine or something that was could lay right next to the side of your sketchbook or above it, you know, that would be ideal to 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 do any kind of sketching like this. Um, okay, so I'm not going to worry too much about doing more of these details. Um, Let's say I'm just going to very quickly outline it because now I've got the basic structure in here and, and I can even just do a few little things and think, okay, let's say the length of this toe. How do I feel about that? That length looks the way I've drawn it, almost this length of the top of the heel. Now let's look at the, the original image and I can kind of eyeball it. Eh, actually pretty close. I think... The, this is a little bit, this is as, right? I see, there might be a little bit of a disruption coming up here with the internet. So, we'll see. Some of you may experience a uh, stop or start happening. Anyway, I'm just gonna keep on going forward. So, I'm gonna come up here. I'm actually really not even looking at the original on the screen. I'm just kind of using this as the inspiration. And then I, you know, I can even, as I do this kind of thing, be designing a new shoe, right? It depends on your goals as an artist, like how realistic you want to be. Personally, I'm not super concerned with realism um, I'm more interested in just getting the something that's convincing enough okay so I'm gonna show you in a second a totally different way to do this and that would be working from the outs or inside out and the main difference is like what, why is, what's the difference between these two different methods? Well, this one works really well if you're working from an image. So if you have a photograph like I have right here, you're working from images on the web. Well, this works perfect because I can literally look for the reference right next to me and draw what I see there. How many got four? Sometimes I get confused with all my own lines here. So we got all this. I'm not going to spend it really too much time on this. It's just a little quick sketch, but. Uh, Peter says there was a jump in the feed. I refreshed it and it's back again. Thanks, Peter. Thanks for the, the update there. Um, so that some people, if if it does freeze on you, if people um, just try reloading your page, and usually that solves all the problems. So we have these wrinkles here, and in a few weeks we'll talk about fabric and such. So that's one way of doing it. Now, again, this works well if we have a model in front of us or a photograph we're working from or the actual shoe in front of us or whatever. But let's say we're trying to imagine this drawing or conversely, we're doing the exercise that I, uh, I suggested or what I do with my, my um, art school students. Is let's try to draw the foot inside the shoe and then we can obviously draw the shoe over top of it. So how would we do that? How would we draw this foot that is invisible? Right? Well we could start the same sort of way, right? We can look for this bottom angle of the shoe. Right? We could say, okay, that's kind of let me 
and you can you can just look at the what's above here, right? But let's say we didn't even have that, and then we have this is the ground. All right. Well, the first thing we can put in here is this is kind of the 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 balls of the the well, it kind of depends on also the shoe. But these kind of sneakers. Actually, let's so let's say I'm going to draw the I'm going to draw the, the sneaker over top. So I'm just going to imagine that there's this much of the sole of the sneaker, right? So the foot's actually not right on the ground, but it's inside of this shoe here. So the the bottom, the 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 the, the balls of the foot, the front part of the foot would be somewhere like this. Right? And then we'd have you know, the big toe would be somewhere here, right? So we have this, the big toe would be here, All right? And then we've got this, the cantaloupe, All right? And then the heel. So that we can then, and let's say this comes up, we can then kind of, uh, let me see, I'll just draw this, use a slightly different color, like what if I use um, purple, is that different, not green maybe? Okay, so we start, if we have something kind of like this. then I can draw now there's obviously the, the other toes here which all right then this is gonna come up And you, you could make the ankles as maybe they should be a little bit bigger. All right, so, and then, well, let's draw some other toes in here. So we have this one. You got two, three, four, five. So I might have made this a little bit too long, but that's okay, right? So you could see, we can see this foot, and then now, now we can actually, we can draw this shoe on it. We could draw um, any other kind. In fact, instead of just drawing this shoe, because we've already done it, let's look for something a little bit different. Let's look for a high healed shoe since we've got this position here um, image and so let's find a shoe from the side um So we could, uh, how to make your own high heels, crazy. Okay, so I'm just gonna drag this onto my desktop and open it up. <laughs> oh, that doesn't have to be quite that big. <laughs> um, oh, I guess it has to be a little bit smaller. It's either one or the other, isn't it? Hmm. Well, okay, so now I've, I've, let's construct this shoe onto this drawing. 
So we know, I mean, it's going to be a little bit different. I'm, I'm sure there's some people watching saying, well, you know, there'd be more pressure here and the arch is a little bit higher, but just for, for fun. So we've got, I'm going to use my blue here to draw the outside. So this would be the outside part of the shoe here. Okay. And then we've got this, I'm kind of drawing the, the brown part of the shoe underneath. All right. Um, and then if we think about it, it's kind of higher up here and then it gets a little bit thinner. I can even make, I can very lightly kind of sketch this up. Okay, how far down do I want to go? I could go down to, let's say here, maybe? I, don't, I know uh, some people really like that uh, toe cleavage thing that happens, so you can give your toes as much cleavage as you like. And you can make this taper in as tight as you want. You can... Anyway, I think you get what I'm putting down here. And, you know, I, I don't really know too much about women's shoes and, and their shape. Maybe this could be pointier. Um, and then let's do the, the heel. All right, so let's say if this is the bottom. Oh, actually, we forgot. I need to... Well, okay, how does this, I'm never, never drawn this kind of, kind of, okay, here's a bit of the sole of this shoe, <laughs> and then, So, I, does that make sense, right? We, you can start from the outside and work your way in, or work your way from the inside, work your way out. This way that I just did, you can see that once I've got, like I can, I could draw shoes and feet from my imagination without anybody being around. I could be in the middle of a jail cell and I could be illustrating and inventing women's shoes. Right? Once you know how to draw the basic structure of the foot, then all sorts of other things immediately become possible. Okay, so let's, um, maybe I'll keep that up. Well, let's go to another drawing. Let's find another pair of shoes, maybe from a different angle. You can see here's the the image I used for the thumbnail the video. Um, so we've got maybe something with a slightly different angle, kind of like this. That could work. Kind of like this. Cause what I would encourage people to do would be to try drawing your own feet with your shoes on. Uh, I just want some kind of different shapes. So, I mean, there's so many, but I just gotta make a choice here, don't I? Um...
draw the right foot here. Okay, so the reason why I'm just bringing this image up here is we're gonna we're gonna do I think the similar sort of thing. Maybe we're gonna work from uh, the let's let's do the exact same exercise again. Like why not, right? So. Um, the more we do this, I think you can see the two different ways of of of, of capturing this end. Well, maybe let's go on the side of our sketchbook. Okay, so, oops. And you know what? Let's make that a little bit wider. Okay. So, um, if I want to draw this shoe as I see it right now, then how would I how would I make this happen? All right. Well, the way that I would start working again, we can use a few different methods. We could use the block in method. Um, what I would do is probably start sketching this in, and I'm going to draw this maybe darker than most people would ever do it, but this is kind of how I would start, All right? I would just sort of draw this kind of a quick shape, All right? Whether it looks correct or not, now I'm in, in the area, and I know this might appear very light, and some of you may not even be able to see it, so I'm going to, let's... Let's move past this point kind of quickly. So what I've got is I can start with this ankle a little bit here. I'm just going to kind of define that a little bit better. Right now, it's part of this is disguised by the grass. So I'm thinking about like how wide is this distance here? Right, this shape here. How do I capture? that shape. Alright, so I'm kind of, this is another, kind of a little bit different than the block-in method. This is a bit more of a kind of a sketchy technique. Um, so I'm just sort of trying to find all of the the details here that can help me with the the structure. So one of the things is you see this kind of the 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 white I don't know a trim around the edge how it gets really thin here and then it widens up and gets bigger and then gets thin again. Well, I'm looking at this, and I feel like it needs to be pointier up here. So I'm going to extend this as well as this. Okay, we got these folds here. bother too much with the laces but that kind of gets me into a place where at least I've got something on the page to react to now I might want to I think this is gonna needs to be slimmer okay so now I'm gonna start kind of refining this I've got a very kind of sketchy drawing so I might need, you know, I might need to just, to doing these laces and things can be, I could find myself falling down a bit of a rabbit hole trying to capture the, the, these, this kind of form. So I'm just going to quickly kind of outline it. I'm not going to be too worried about getting, because this actually, if I pull this off, 
and it wouldn't be too hard to do. It would look really cool, for absolutely sure. All right, we've got this lace coming in here. Got to... So it's getting wider and thinner as it goes around. And wider and thinner. Thick and thin. Those variations are just gonna All right, so there's there's that. I got that in. Um You know, I've, I've mentioned before, even I think in the last episode, where every artwork goes through periods of feeling like that it's coming along really well and coming, and then times where it feels like it's just, you know, falling off a cliff and, you know, you just want to give up because it's just so bad. You know, when I began this sketch, I had that same ooh, feeling of like, I don't know, maybe you even heard a little bit of hesitancy in my voice as I started the drawing. Um, and again, I just, I think it's so important to remember that that happens to everybody, to every artist all the time. Um, See, even that's a little bit thick. Uh, so maybe I'll just widen that up. And then, you know, I, I, I may even go through a few more um, uh, ups and downs on this, even on this exact sketch I'm working on right now. Um, Give it a little bit of shading, and then I'm going to move on to the drawing right next to it. So you could do, you know, I would encourage, just like drawing hands, drawing, practicing drawing your feet or your partner's feet or your children's feet, working from photographs off the web, you know, like um, all of those things are super, super helpful because the more, the drawing feet and hands are the things that trip most artists up all the time. So if you can kind of take some time to kind of practice those particular things, it's gonna give you so much more confidence. Cause you just feel like, okay, well, you know, there might be a lot of other things in this drawing that are, difficult, but at least this is something that I know how to do. Okay. 
Um, let's just get this sock. By the way, I, I love using these little dotted lines as like stitching on things. I just, it, it always just, it helps kind of show what kind of material it is or that it is material. Um, Spend some time drawing this guy's hairy legs. <laughs> okay, and you know this is I've I, I made a little mistake while I was doing this. I just darkened that in a little too much, so um, I'm just gonna try to you know make it work, as Tim Gunn says. So just trying to kind of blend it in a little bit better than it was before. Okay. So I think I'm ready to move on from this sketch to the, uh, this version over here. Uh, it does look like I missed a little bit there on this side, doesn't it? Okay, so just take a quick second. So let's say I want to draw this foot sitting here without a shoe on, right? Or like I did previously, I want to invent a shoe that could go on this foot. Okay, well, Let's start by finding the uh, where that cantaloupe is going to be. So we could, if we, you know, let's. Uh, okay, I'm. It's kind of. I almost want to hide this because it's. How would I do this? I didn't even have that. I'm gonna leave it up there so people can see them side by side. Or if you're still working on that one, let's just say I'm gonna put in a line here for the cantaloupe. Right, and we know that the foot kind of comes, it's if the heel is down here. I can put that in already. It's ball. Right? Looks like it's not gonna be at the same. Well it's kinda I can make I can make it work. So let's I was gonna draw that there and just say the foot was lower, but let's try to make this as accurate as possible. So I just can see I just moved this because Inside here would be the the heel. All right. So what is the angle of this cantaloupe here? So this side angle of the cantaloupe. Well, it's going to be. We don't have to nail this perfectly either. It's gonna be something like this. It's not too high up because we're kind of seeing it on an angle. Right, and if 
we thought I'd think about this other side is that well I'm not going to draw the other side of the foot because we can't really see it so but then we have uh, I guess I'll be pretty close so it might be a little bit longer I could always sh again shrink things down we think of this here we divide that in half So we have, and I'm, um, I'm not looking at any images. I'm just using my imagination here. Right. Okay, I'm just gonna erase this other circle here to avoid any confusion. People drawing two circles and all that kind of stuff. Um, let's see. I'm just going to sharpen my pencil. So right now, I feel like this cantaloupe is a little bit too rotated this way. So I'm going to rotate it back a bit here and make it less, make it a little bit more shallow. Not that it's a, a big difference, but um, it's just that those, and, and we're not even obviously going to see that cantaloupe, but for me, I find it can be a little confusing sometimes, like, or, or, or not confusing, but if I can see that cantaloupe properly, it makes drawing the foot so much easier. So, I'm drawing this, and let me, actually, I'm going to bring my self back on screen here, because I'm not even, I'm not looking at the original image in, in any way, so there's no point in that being on the screen. these toes in here. of a, a big toenail and you could widen that toe out a bit usually they are a little bit bigger um, and then you know I think I'm these toes are all a little long they should be shorter right. okay I'm just gonna add a little bit of shading so you can see inside of this here yeah so I so you can see that original thing where I drew the the cantaloupe it, it feels like this foot is more rotated forward than so but that's you know like I like I always tell people if you can see it if you can see your mistake then that's a big part of the process of, of drawing and learning to, to draw. It's just being able to s recognize the problem and then so that you can get closer to solving. Anyway, I'm drawing a foot from my imagination through this shoe, right? Which is the, the goal of this type of an exercise. Now, um, I could put another shoe on top of this, which well, may 
maybe we should do that just like I did previously. So I'm just kind of darkening it. I find like just giving it, as opposed to just a, a white foot on the on a page, just darkening it just starts to kind of make it look a little bit like it. I haven't done anything to make it uh, to change the shape of it, but for me it just feels like it's gotten better and I'm kind of rescuing it a little bit. Kind of these curving lines going around here kind of help. I guess I could take my shoes off right now and see how close this is. Um, Okay, so that would, be, let's say, uh, let's say I want to put a, some kind of sand, oh, right, fact. okay, so I'm going to try to do this quickly, um, I'm going to look up sandal. And okay, so let's. I'm going to bring this down here. So I'm just looking at different kinds of things I could kind of quickly draw on top of this foot. Now, I probably would have done this earlier in the drawing, but I just want to show you that it's possible. Some, I was thinking like flip flops or something we could put on here. Um, I guess I want the right foot, would, would just make everybody's life a little bit easier. So let's go right foot sandal. Oh, look at these, that'll be kind of fun. Um, just gotta pick one. I like these. Um, <laughs> eight ways to make your sandals hurt less. <laughs> this is, I just feel like this is a quite a ridiculous little exercise, but I think once we understand how all of this can work, it becomes really kind of fun that we can start playing around like this. Okay, so let's, uh, uh, I gotta rotate, what I would, let's say I'm gonna rotate this just to kind of help us a bit. Uh, so that we don't have to do too much imagining and we can just kind of, so under here, it's gonna probably follow quite closely the shape of the foot. Maybe even cut in a little bit earlier here. Mm, maybe a little bit longer, right? Really sure how how far that's probably good enough. I'm sure there's some people have really long sandals. Okay, I'm gonna give it some thickness. Just gonna hide that mistake by just shading right over it, right? <laughs> okay. And now we've got a strap coming up towards the center of the foot here. 
notice I'm just trying to give it a bit of a curve. Okay, and then we've got this strap kind of coming up over. bow or buckle, I'm just going to kind of ignore that. like that that's but I so again um, I'm just gonna bring this back here so you can see how I can take that photograph if I understand how to draw a foot I can take the foot right out of the shoe draw it and then put something else on top or or on under that foot All right so it'd be it's the same sort of thing that if you want to you, were, you saw somebody just, again, sitting at a bus stop. You could draw them and then turn that into another character. You know, once you understand, if you can see that structure underneath, then you can make them whatever you want them to be, right? And you don't have to like, ah, oh, I wish they were wearing a different color jacket or a different, you know, I wish they took their hat off or were wearing a hat or these sort of things that a photographer or filmmaker might have. As a visual artist, as a drawer or painter, you can just draw it the way you want to draw it. You can just start, which becomes so exciting because you're not limited in the same way, again, like a photographer would have to be, you know, would have to go and ask that person to take their jacket off if they were an actor or a stranger, which would be really awkward, right? Okay, so um, let's go, to, let's start our final drawing of the day here. So we're gonna draw that Van Gogh image. I don't know why I'm not using the handle here. Uh, I'm so desperate to get the T into my system that I just disregard the handle entirely. So we're going to try drawing uh, Van Gogh's shoes. I'm trying to remember what this is called. I think there, I have a website. Uh, it's called A Pair of Leather Clogs uh, at the Van Gogh Museum in Amsterdam, which I've never been to. He's one of my favorite artists. And uh, the last time I was in Amsterdam, or the first only time I was there, it was closed for like a massive renovation. It's supposed to be amazing. So then that was 20 years ago. My goodness. Okay. Uh, so, how would we draw these shoes here? Now, um, so, I guess in my mind, what I'm thinking, I'll just tell you what I'm thinking is maybe do I want to try drawing some feet after this that would go in those shoes? but maybe we'll see how far we can get. Um, 
Okay. Oh, this doesn't quite fit. Okay. Um, and there isn't. Okay. And then I'm going to shrink it down again. Okay. Da, 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 da. So how would we get the, those those that drawing onto this page? And I love Van Gogh's style here, which is one of the reasons he did a few other pictures of other shoes. But I just love the in fact. Let's just so I can. So I just thought I would pull that up and just kind of mention kind of why I like this picture so much. There's obviously, the simplicity of it I think is super attractive. Um, you could see like Van Gogh was, he didn't overthink his subject matter too much. He made paintings of everything in his apartment. And he didn't have a lot of things in his apartment, so he would be drawing his clothes, his chair, his books, the flowers. He would draw the paintings that he stuck to his wall. He would draw his bed. He'd go for walks and draw the, the, the things around his neighborhood. He would draw his friends. He would draw his doctors. He would draw the innkeeper at the place he was. So everything is like. You know, he, and he was generating at least one painting every day, if not sometimes two or even three. Like he was a machine. And you could tell that he probably like he just maybe he's sitting in bed, wakes up in the morning, and sees his shoes, you know, across the room, and is like, great, get my canvas out, boom, and just start painting. Right? I don't get the sense that he organized things too much. Like he might have kind of looked around to see the right angle for things, but there's just like a, an immediacy that I think is, is very inspiring about all of this. Like, he's just like, I just want to paint what is in my field of view. Boom, let's draw that. Let's paint that. Boom, like, okay, you know, or I'm gonna draw my hand, I'm gonna draw my feet. Like, so what's out the window right now? Okay, so I love that quality. I also really like the way that he draws and paints. You can see those very descriptive marks that are like, carving it's like I literally think of somebody like wood carving like chiseling you know a stick into a spoon that kind of thing right okay so enough talk let's draw so first thing let's want to get this thing onto the page is what are some simple things to help kind of guide us a little bit well kind of a, the first thing I see is the edge of the table or I don't know, maybe it's the where the floor meets the wall. I don't know where these shoes are. It feels, for me, just somehow feels like this is a table and that's a wall or something. Anyway, um, so that gets us, that's already telling us a lot of information, right? Because now we can use that as a guide to help draw this shoe, right? Because we could say, okay, I, I want this front shoe, the toe, to be somewhere there. So I'm kind of in, if I want to get even more specific, I can even try to get that angle a little bit. All right, it's gonna come down. I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw it a little bit darker than I would suggest most people draw. Um, just so we can, I can make sure that everybody can see it, but I would be drawing lightly. All right, so I'm just gonna kind of chisel my way in here. Okay. And I see this kind of a shape here. Right. And whether or not all of these lines are perfect right now is totally unimportant to me. All right, I'm just trying to 
get lines down that I can react against or two. So right now, I, f I feel like this, I've nailed that. I'm pretty satisfied with that. I like this. What I'm thinking in my mind is, is this too wide? Maybe I'm gonna make this just a little bit more narrow, right? Which means this is gonna have to come in and be more narrow, which is actually great because I think you need it to be, you know? And if any time I need to kind of go here, I think I've got, maybe that should kind of come in a little bit more. Okay, I'm going to sneeze here in about 10 seconds. It's going to be loud. Oh my goodness. <coughs> Gosh, I'm sorry. That was a wild sneeze. It got away from me. Um, okay. So. I'm also just, I'm just gonna draw right through the other shoe here. Um, just cause I wanna make sure that it, it's gonna work. Uh, I don't wanna draw one shoe, this part, and then this one next to it, and then realize, oh, there's, it's like physically impossible cause this shoe is sort of, the other shoe, which I haven't started yet, appears to be, you know, in this other shoe's space, like as if they're joined together, like, tw you know, uh, twins, you know, uh, that are, uh, is that conjoined? Is that what the term is? So I don't want that to happen. So I wanna make sure there's enough room there. Okay, so let's, so I got one that I feel pretty good about how do I get the next one down here so where I can I've got this in place so now it's like where could I kind of take inspiration from well I could think about this area here where they appear to be joined together right like if I take this line and try to kind of draw it across Right, and this one I feel like is just a little bit below that line. So I feel like that kind of works. I feel like somewhere in here is the tip of that shoe. And I can see this shape, this triangle in here. Okay. So then I've got another shape here. Okay, I'm gonna try to speed up here here now it's it's important that these are this is believable right that I want to try to this shoe that you know there's is a slightly different angle and it's closer to us so it should feel as big or bigger than this shoe if it appears smaller than this shoe then it's just going to be a little bit off and it's going to drive people nuts, right? So if I think about what is this, there's this shadow that comes down here and let's say I want the ball, this shoe to kind of fit in down here. Is that going to work? I don't know. You know this. This kind of comes down around. It's kind of wide, isn't it? Something like that. Okay, so this thing then, base of this shoe. See how all this kind of sketching, searching lines in here? I could have tried to use the blocking method for this. 
again, I, I always just want to try to give you, show you as many different like techniques as possible to accomplish this. So this is kind of like the blocking method, but I, I really went pretty quickly. Like if I was doing the blocking method, I would have done really the whole drawing first before going into some of the details that I've so anyway okay so I'm happy with this shoe I feel like I need to just shrink this down potentially a bit So I'm going to spend just, let's even think about putting a timer here. I'm going to put 10 minutes on the clock, have a sip of tea, and I want to get um, this sketch done by then. Okay, so. I feel like they're it's close enough. Let's close enough for for our purpose here. Let's just start going in here. The other I also really like the way that Van Gogh has these kind of very heavy outlines. I just I just find that super satisfying. And that would have been very anti uh, academic like the 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 prevailing sort of style of painting that was taught in the what was what was called the academies although which is now sort of how we think of art schools now and back then there was like a, a certain kind of style or technique so this kind of flubbed that but that's all right uh, so there was a particular kind of style that the academies would teach and you were expected to kind of learn that style and then reproduce it. And Van Gogh was, you know, way off the mark in that sense. Like, you could say he was a very bad student. Like, his artworks... Um, uh, and, and, and this outlining thing is... is which is such a iconic part of his style would have would have been just like would have made the ears bleed of many different kind of academic academic academicians what's the I feel like I think that's right but I just can't say it um, because they were much more about like soft blending, you know, like as what you see in the Mona Lisa, for instance, where, you know, the, the smile, there's no real lines in her face at all. It's very, you know, you can't see any brush strokes whatsoever versus, you know, this one. I mean, you, you could see every single brush stroke, you know, in this, that made up this painting is their plain as sight. And I think he, you know, he was a, uh, a bit of a religious fanatic in a way. Um, and, you know, probably even saw a bit of maybe a moral um, uh, quality to this idea of showing everything. You know, that there's no hidden um, technique that, you know, just makes it look genius or miraculous. All of it is laid bare. I could be reading too much into it, but that would be, 
I don't think I'd be too far off in saying things like that. You know, that he... I don't know if he consciously, probably, probably unconsciously, but I think... You know, he wasn't really concerned with um, the same things that the academic artists were. Okay. So I've got a few drawings that have been submitted to me over the past uh, uh, 24 hours or so that I want to talk about. Um, I think... Uh, remember exactly who sent them in. I'll have to take another look. I think Heidi sent one in. Um, okay, so I've got just under six minutes left. So let's bring this to a resolution. Um, I'm going to kind of use his very... Um, like these very quick kind of brush strokes that he's put in here. And he, he drew very similar as well, right? And what I like about these brush strokes is they really tell us the direction of the planes or these surfaces, right? Like this feels like it's coming this way. These are going up and around. Like Van Gogh is one person, if I feel like I'm having difficulty seeing things or drawing, I'll just kind of try to draw in his style a little bit. In this very kind of chunky style. And it feels like it's just like, oh, okay, now I've, now I've figured it out again. not actually that many curves, right? It's very angular. It's, it's a lot like that uh, blocking method. Like as soon as I start putting curves in here, I'm like, ah, I gotta, assuming I'm trying to abide by Van Gogh's kind of style, then I wanna kind of keep it uh, a little bit more angular. This is a little bit different than the way that I, my own personal style, you know, I'd be putting in a little bit more curving lines. But this style also lends itself very well to painting because it's, you know, you could easily see how these are individual brush strokes that we're putting in here. And even the way that he's, you know, this this shadow, which kind of comes what, around here. Is what's also interesting about that shadow is how it it's not flat and it doesn't it you know it uh, kind of reflects the shape of the shoe. Also, is kind of changing the brush strokes on the table. So a lot of stuff going on here. I've got two minutes left on my clock before we kind of finish up and go to our final little critique. I 
and obviously I could darken some things in here. And so let's just do that kind of quickly. I'm just gonna Three seconds left. Okay, so pretty good for what, uh, about 15, 20 minutes of drawing. Okay, I don't think there's time for me to do any more here, but I think that uh, that is, um, I feel satisfied enough with, with that. So let me bring up some Okay. Where did all my screenshots go to? I'm just sort of, I don't know exactly who did what here, just the way that I'm kind of drag them quickly onto my desktop. Um, so, here's these, this hands from a couple classes ago. Beautiful, look at that. So, I, great drawing. It was, what's nice about this is it feels very. Um, oh, can I see the whole thing? It feels very loose and um, uh, like sp there's a kind of spontaneity to it that feels like it doesn't feel like overly labored. You know, like the like sometimes when you see it, uh, somebody sketch sometimes even of hands, is you really feel like things have been worked and worked and worked and overworked, and some places are really worked and some places aren't. So this just feels like it was drawn with a lot of confidence very quickly, which I think is would be very satisfying um, for it. I mean, I think that's where everybody wants to be. You know, when people see drawings by Matisse and Picasso, the later works that are done in, you know, like six lines and he's drawn a whole face, there are some people who look at that and go like, oh, my kid could draw that. But I can guarantee you give your kid a piece of paper and ask them to do something like that, they're going to create a very different image. And there's, because what it is, is, is confidence that like 
three or four lines, boom, boom. I got the shape of the hair and the face, couple eyes, nose, mouth, and there's a likeness there. That is like, that is not an easy thing to do. So there's, this is there's a great um, amount of confidence in this drawing. Similarly here, and I like that you're using those colors kind of like I'm doing here so you can kind of integrate that first line of kind of sketchiness into the overall image and it doesn't kind of, it's not distracting anyway. Um, this one looks great. I think this is kind of, I think this is based off the drawing that we were doing. I'm just gonna, so I can see a little better. There's this thumb is a little bit, uh, th it's this area right here that is too wide and then this is too thin. Not a huge deal at, at all, but I would just kind of thin this out and, you know, uh, transfer that weight into the, th that digit. Otherwise it looks great. Everything else here works really well. Um, yeah, don't have much much to say, but really great work. You know, I, I would say maybe we would, this, this pad in the hand is a little bit wide, so I'd probably make this a little bit thinner and then lower these fingers a bit, right? Or conversely, raise this part up a little higher. So instead of being kind of down low, it would actually come up higher that makes sense so it's it's kind of the turning this wrist up a little bit more so there's two ways to always go about it if there's a problem is to erase something and move it down or erase something and move it up to, to join not a big deal at all but I just just so I can try to give people the constructive uh, feedback so they can do better next time I guess uh, so two great drawings and again I'm sorry I, I drag those off without knowing who sent them in. As I do this in real time, okay, and this one is uh, Heidi, who has sent in a, a picture of the foot that we were drawing together. Looks great. This is fantastic. Um, and I think, you know, again, you're following what I was doing, so what I would and I think I mentioned this as I was doing it, is I would probably have put this toe, so this shape, in front of the, this part of the foot. I mean, everything, it looks great, looks great. I just think if I was to redraw this drawing that I showed you guys how to draw, um, I would have just tapered this and make it a little bit smaller so that this toe appears to be in front of this toe. Um, so that's that's my own bad, my apologies, but just for the sake of, because um, it's those layering of shapes that, especially when we're talking about drawing, that, that are clues to the viewer as to what's in front of the other, right? So we want to make it very clear that this toe is in front of there. Um, yeah, looks fantastic. Uh, let me see quickly, any notes? Um, uh, what else? You know, we didn't really talk about the top of the shape of the foot and any kind of bones or veins or tendons and that kind of stuff, which is not really, um, you know, part of this, maybe a little bit more too advanced for, I think, most people watching. But, you know, if you wanted to, to take this drawing even further, it would be to add a little bit more contour to this, to the foot and to kind of think about because right now, and again, I don't think I, I, I didn't shave this in my, so I think you actually went further in this drawing than I did in my own. Um, but uh, it would be just to kind of start rendering this over top of here. So maybe making it darker or lighter, potentially down here, because it looks like if this is the light hitting down here, then this would be much darker, right? Um... Was that my own mom whose images I was uh, I was giving feedback on? I'm 
I'm not sure. Um, okay. I just see her comment. Thanks, my well, Maybe she just has to run. She's saying goodbye. Anyway. Um, so, thank you everybody for uh, drawing along with me today. On Monday or Tuesday, our next class, I'm going to show you how to draw faces of babies and children since it came up in the last, the last episode. And since tomorrow is our daughter's first birthday, she's turning one year old tomorrow, um, I just thought that would be kind of, even though it's a little bit of a belated thing, but we've been celebrating her birthday for the past like month. And it'll, we've been opening up presents early and everything. Um, so that's just my own way, little way of sneaking her in. And um, and maybe, depending on her sleep schedule, maybe she can even come down here and draw along uh, next to me. Maybe I can try drawing her, depending on <laughs> how amenable she is to that. But uh, so over the weekend, what I would just encourage you to do is... Uh, try to draw some shoes, try to draw your feet. You know, one thing, I, I did bring some shoes down. I thought maybe you could, but, you know, just try making a quick sketch of a shoe. And what I think is good about that is it, it's something so simple and so humble about just a plain old stinky shoe, right? And you know, you could use a nice brand new pair of shoes, your most expensive shoes that you, you own, or the dirtiest mud boots that you use for gardening or mowing the lawn. And both of those are going to create very different kinds of drawings, especially if you're really looking at them carefully and you try to draw the scuffs or lack thereof on your shoes, right? Or take your ugly shoes and as you draw them, clean them up and get rid of the mud and the grass stains and make it look like a brand new pair of shoes, right? Or conversely, take a nice new pair of shoes and make them look dirty, you know, scuff them up and put tears and um, clumps of mud and stuff gum on the bottom or whatever, right? It's different ways that you can approach this. But again, just like Van Gogh, you can see that drawing, you know, like a you know, simple composition of a few shoes is enough to get you going right because looking for inspiration or something to draw is a great excuse to not do anything and just to uh, jump on netflix and just you know start uh, binging on some random show drawing your shoes or your feet even drawing your feet while you're sitting there watching a hockey game or something is would be a great use of your time uh and you're you'll afterwards feel like not only did you just wash you know watch some episodes just washed over you but you learned something and you drew something whether it's the best drawing you ever made or not is totally irrelevant as far as I'm concerned anyway so um thank you everybody for another great episode and um oh by the way a new shirt that my wife gave me my birthday's in a month from now so she was she couldn't wait to uh to give me a couple new shirts so i'll be wearing those over the next uh, few weeks um uh, because i like them and um to show you and to publicly thank her <laughs> uh anyway so thanks everybody for tuning in if you liked this video you found it useful please like and subscribe hit the bell share it with your friends I've gotten a few messages from people saying, hey, I'm sharing it with all my friends, encouraging my friends to watch. Um, so thank you for doing that. If you want to give and leave a small donation via PayPal, the link is below down there. One dollar, five dollars. Uh, I had somebody give me a $200 the other day. And I gotta figure out how to uh, publicly acknowledge people for doing all that. So those of you that have done that, I really do appreciate that. Like, it, I can't tell you how, how um, uh, generous it is and it just helps make me feel like all of this is useful <laughs> and that other people are getting uh, use out of it so I feel like this has been a great use of my uh, time over the past four months okay anyway talk to you guys soon have a great weekend or maybe this is the beginning of your week depending on your schedule 
So, uh, yeah, talk to you soon, everybody.